Does it sound good now? No, it sounds terrible. And stupid power, I was right. Sorry. Welcome to the Board of Life Podcast. It's Friday. Friday, Friday, gotta get down. Stop. <laughs> Stop. I don't, I just, like, I forgot that existed. That wasn't even that bad. I never understood why everyone hated it so much. Like, I didn't like it, but it I was It was like, pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Did you but, ever really like, listen to it? Not really. I mean, Dude, I watched it, like, once. No, it's like, it was bad. I don't know. That poor girl. Just, like, the lyrics in it are what's bad. Like, I mean, her singing is bad, too, but... I feel like everybody's singing. Bad enough to ruin her entire life? It didn't ruin her life, dude. She made more songs after that, and they oh, went on she? to be... Yeah, they oh. they got just as many, like... Hateful views? <laughs> <laughs> but views nonetheless, like... I guess that's one what would you rather have? What would you rather have on this podcast? Six okay, like, nice, friendly views? Or ten million, like, fuck you guys views? Six. Six good ones. Yeah, I guess. Ten million people saying fuck you is kind of like... Well, like a lot. Like, yeah, a lot. that girl probably thought about killing herself. You think? Yeah. Can we not talk about suicide? Because Robin Williams just died. Thank you, Avila. That's too soon. Someone has literally always just committed suicide. Yeah, seriously. Are we never going to be able to talk about it? Not that it's funny. And the Robin Williams thing is a really big deal to me. Um, yeah, that is a bummer. Yeah. It's too, it's, it's too bad. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that on this. It's going to bum me out too much. Okay. Because then I was thinking about, like, whoa, what other people would die that I would be so, like, as sad as I was about Robin Williams. That's dying. a horrible thing to think about. Like, well, who else would wise. I be sad that died? Like, and Bill Murray was really the only one that I could think would, like, carry that kind of weight, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, comedian-wise. Uh-huh. I mean, maybe, like, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Um, um, that's, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Dude, so, me and, actually, let me say, Avila and I saw a movie on Monday. It's pretty cool, it was The Giver. I got to see it early. Before it ever came out in uh, any other theater. <laughs> why? Uh, what do you mean, Why? Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How did you get to see it before any... Why did Livermore have the very first ever showing of you and Avila? It wasn't Livermore. It was Dublin and... Excuse me. No, I get it. Um, it was at the Regal. Uh, and it wasn't just there. Okay, listen to the story. It's kind of a funny story. Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Yours didn't land as gracefully as mine. No, but it sounded... We're never going to get that back. It sounded funnier, though. <laughs> Checked on like the pedals over there in a while. They look very precariously perched. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway. Um, okay, so uh, I heard last week before I went to Yosemite um, on the radio, the guy was like, "World premiere of The Giver um, at the Regal Cinemas in Dublin, California." The kids were like running through the streets and newspapers going, "Extra, extra, we know about it. The Giver coming out on." Uh, Monday. Yeah, then we got up to you. He's like, take it, friend. <laughs> well, put me a red carpet event. Get him while they're hot. Man. Yeah. And then that kid got hit by a car, unfortunately. <laughs> he was in the road yelling. Um, in the road yelling. Yeah. <laughs> no one stopped the car. <laughs> um, okay, so, no okay, so, okay, 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 okay. Okay, guy on the radio yep. says, world premiere at the Regal red carpet event. You can win tickets if you call at this time, 4.15 to 4.30. I was like, fuck yeah, that's cool. I'm doing this. I'm going to give her with my fucking favorite book. It was really the only book I've ever read, but... <laughs> you also read Life of Pi. Life of Pi, which was my other favorite book, and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which was my other favorite book. And what was that other one? If you read more, I think you would appreciate it because every book you've read has been your favorite book. What was that other one? What was that other one? Uh, fucking Go Dog Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but besides that one, I mean, I mean, because that was a great book. Don't get me wrong. Uh, any Dr. Seuss book was good. Uh, no, the one, uh, The Things They Carry, that was a good book, too. Yeah, Things They Carry, that's heavy, man. Yeah, that one was heavy. Uh, so, yeah, four favorite books. The Giver. Okay, anyways, I'll get back to the point. Um, so, the guy was like, boom, red carpet event at the at the uh, Regal Theater, which is like an IMAX theater, so it's like... It's nice. Yeah, it's like... It's, it's, it's not the nicest theater. place, but the theater quality, or the screen quality is good. Yeah, it's... 
uh, and so I was like, dude, this is like, this is real quality as well. This is, <laughs> this, is this is legit. Like, I was like, dude, Jeff Bridges is gonna be there. <laughs> like, Katie Holmes is gonna be there. They're gonna be doing. The, it, it, he was like this, dude. Why would you do that? Red carpet. <laughs> it's gonna like a red carpet. Dude, it was the premiere. It said world premiere. Like this is where it's premiering. That's what that's what everybody made it up to see. That's what it seemed like on the, the internet. That's what it made it seem that's online. Such a low budget then. Dude, okay, listen to the story. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, everybody was like making it seem like it was a fucking red carpet event, like a real last thing. Um, and uh, and so um. Uh, so I was like sick I'm gonna do this and then I didn't I was at work and so I was like I just got sidetracked and I didn't call and I didn't win the tickets and then Monday came around and I was like oh and I was like that thing's happening Abel like you wanna go down there and like see what it's all about like it's a red carpet event so it's probably gonna be sick yeah so you guys dressed up <laughs> well that's the thing is I was like dude I, I was like I feel like we should dress up <laughs> I was like, I feel like if it's a world premiere, I feel like the people there are going to be dressed nice. Like, <laughs> Did you? No. Thank God we you didn't. Picked, you picked her up and she was in like a super nice dress and she was like, are you like a promise? And you're like, oh, no. Oh, I called that off. I called the dress and the thing off. No, no, no. Yeah, dude, I felt like me. I felt like such an idiot, dude. So I was like, dude, I feel like we should dress up, Evelyn. And she was like, I feel like it's fine. I was like, all right, but we're going to be the only ones not dressed up. Um... <laughs> And so I was like, let me just, like, check. That was, like, on the way there. But I was like, let me just check and see if I can, like, buy tickets online to, like, watch the movie. Um, to, like, g- like be a part of this event. Um, mm-hmm. And then and I was able to. And I was like, oh, shit, we can do it. Like, we can go to the red carpet event and, like, meet Jeff Bridges. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> the, 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 like, the, the, the sequence of evidence. Like, even his phrase, like, world premiere because, yep, it's coming out today, like, everywhere. Um, no, not everywhere. When did, it, when did it come out? It comes out tomorrow. Or it comes out, well, today, Friday. Or, no, it comes out on the 15th. Which is Friday. Which is, um... Yeah. And what we, is today? It's Wednesday, uh... I'm watching this, it's Friday, that's why you keep saying that. I was like, yeah, I yeah, missed like, work today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, Friday when this comes out. Friday when people are watching this. Um, so it comes out, yeah, on Friday, today, the 15th. I think Friday the 15th. I called in sick. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, yeah, today's the 13th. Two more days would mean the 15th. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, just really quickly, I read a post somewhere today, and it said like in an English class one time we were told to write like the scariest story that we could, and one girl started off with it was Friday the Thirteenth, the night before Halloween, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that was so hard. It was the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> So funny. <laughs> oh, okay, continue. Oh, man. Jeff Bridges world premiere. Some people. Yeah. So I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Like we got tickets, Avila. We're going to the red carpet event. Like, yeah, we're gonna be on the red carpet with Jeff Bridges, taking pictures with him. Um, He's gonna be like sitting next to me, guys. Yeah. Let's put a popcorn. Yeah. Did you buy me some Snickers bites though? I didn't really do too much this year. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, my last movie was R.I.P.D. and you all know how that one came. Out. And I mean, half of the half of the movie was. That hot lady playing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, shit. I wanted to see that movie. It looked kind of cool. Like, the the movie itself looked dumb, but, like, the like the action stuff in it okay. seemed cool. Like, give her. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Ron uh, Reynolds is funny, I guess. <laughs> I think that's fine. Um, uh, so, where was I? So, I'm like, yeah, we got tickets. Have a little, we can go. And the tickets were $22 each. So, I was like, this has to be real. Like, Obviously. <laughs> Red carpet tickets, twenty two dollars each. These are it, dude. Um, anytime I shell out twenty two dollars per person, I expect a red carpet. Yeah, I expect to be fucking like <laughs> someone's wiping packed my butt. into a, <laughs> packed into a place with pat, shoulder to shoulder with like Katie Holmes on one side and Jeff Bridges on the other side. Like, Why would you, where was Avila sitting? <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't know. I only bought one ticket. So. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, so we got the tickets, and I was like, all right, let's go. We're going, um, and. Uh, and we and it was like it's at seven o'clock. Like on the radio, they were like, um, "There's going to be interviews with the cast, like all this stuff." And I was like, "This is sick!" And it was at mm. seven o'clock, so we get there like a little bit early. We got there like because we just wanted because, like I said, I thought it was a big thing. So like I wanted to go there like a little bit early and, and like make sure and like, see what it was like. Like I was yeah. like, "Let's just go look at it." Um, and uh, we got there at like five thirty or six maybe, and then um, I'm like, "There's nobody there, not a thing, not a soul." And I was like. 
probably just late. Yeah, it was like, the, well, well, maybe like it's like a star thing. Like he's like in his dressing room or something. Uh, at Regal. Like uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Um, I'm like uh, is there some red carpet? Is there? Supposed I was like, to be oh, in? there's red carpet over here. And you're like, God, yeah, it's for Lucy though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm like getting there and I'm like trying to ask the people there, like the people that work there, like what, like. And I don't want to seem too, like, I don't want to ask, like, the question, like... Where's the red yeah. carpet? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I just keep saying event. Like, where's the event? Like, is there some kind of event? And they're like, uh, no, we don't know what you're talking about. Like, I thought there was an event. There has to be something, right? Like, uh, there's, like, a, there's, like, a, it's, like, a premiere event thing. And then they were, like, mm, the lady there was, like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was, like, for the giver, like, the, like, world premiere thing. And she was, like, yeah, yeah. And uh, she was, like, I was, like... Um, like I bought I bought this ticket online and she was like you bought that online and I was like yeah and she's like how and I was like I was like just like on Fandango she's like you weren't supposed to be able to buy that online and I was like well I did I paid twenty two dollars a ticket so that's actually probably a good sign and I was like so like what do I do and she's like I don't know let me go get a manager and figure this out and so I was like okay uh so she like went and did something and then like came back and she's like yeah okay so just go and wait over there in line um and i was like okay uh and i and we so we were like waiting in this long line with a bunch of other people um and then the line got like split up into two lines um one line for the people that paid 22 dollars for their ticket and then the other line was people who got in for free somehow they were like member they were like they had like a membership thing to like the Regals and like to, to the movie theater, um, so they got we got split up in two lines. And then I was standing next to this lady and I was like telling her like I was like oh like what like why are you guys like why are you guys like here like did you read the book The Giver? Are you guys like excited to, to watch the movie? And she's like no I never read the book I just really like Jeff Bridges and I was like oh that's sick I was like dude he's here like Jeff Bridges is here <laughs> and then she was like. <laughs> She was like, really? And I was like, yeah, that's what it said. Like, that's what it said. That's what it said. That's what it said. She pulled out her makeup was like, That's what it said on the radio. I was like, I was like they're here. Like, it's a red carpet. Like, he's no, here. He's had, somewhere. Like, daughter dressed up he's as, like, in, Big Lebowski. The dude. And she was like, he's in she's Dublin. here, Mom. He's in Dublin. He's here. Like, you're going to meet Jeff Bridges tonight. Like, they're doing I promise it. you. <laughs> You will meet Jeff Bridges tonight. Yeah, and, and, she she was like, and, uh, and and then we like went into the movie theater, and I was like, I guess you're not, I guess you're not gonna, gonna meet Jeff Bridges. So it wasn't a red carpet event; it was a streaming of the red carpet event that had happened like three hours earlier in New York City, where the interviews were being were taking place, and the movie was being screened for you the first time. Googled that, dude. I I know. I I just did you get, you saw the movie though? I saw the movie, but. It was such a weird thing because okay, so let me let me finish the whole thing. So uh, we go into the movie theater and it's like at seven o'clock, and then they show all the interviews of all the people that were in the movie, and they show like the making of the movie and stuff like that. It's pretty cool, um, and like it was cool because we were the first people in the paid for line, so we were the first ones in the theater, so we got pretty good seats, which was really cool because I was worried like, dude, there's a lot of people here already, like we're probably gonna get shitty seats, uh, but we didn't, and um, and then the movie played, and it, it was an okay movie, honestly, it was pr- it was pretty good. Are there any shitty seats in a movie theater besides the very front? Yeah, I think I just what I, I always like, I'm like cool with wherever. Really, I, I I don't like to be too far back. Either. I don't really totally watch the movie. I'm usually just face buried in popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I, I would prefer I prefer to be like not middle, but like like right in between back and middle. Like like okay, I just like to be far enough away from the screen to where I don't have to turn my head to look at it. But like it consumes all of my yeah. My like if I sit in the very back, like I'm cool with it. Yeah, but then, but yeah, then you're, but then you're too far. Then the screen doesn't consume enough of your field of view. I like to be like close enough to where like I don't have to, close enough, not too close where I have to turn my head to see each side of the movie, each side of the screen, which I, which we and Avila saw a movie like that one time and it sucked ass and it was like a, it was a movie where with like Mark Wahlberg in it. What was that one called? What okay. was that Avila? No, it was an action movie, uh, Contraband. It came okay. out, it came out like in 2012 or 2011 or something. Um, and like. So it's like a it's like a big action movie. It's not something you want to be like right up into the screen, yeah. like watching a movie. Like so, you guys were like, yeah, exactly. And it, it was kind of hard. You're like looking straight up, and like it's okay. I guess so, yeah. I never thought about. There's it. There's a sweet yeah. spot, at least for me. And I always like to like. It's kind of like a. 
it's it's kind of like a not a tradition but it's like a I don't know what it is it's just like a weird thing where it's like we just gotta go early so we can get the good seats like the seats right in the middle like I don't know we always go early and we always get the same seats basically. well you get to watch the previews and stuff and if you've been there enough and you go with someone who hasn't you seem really smart like you know a lot about movies yeah all the like the trivia facts so mm-hmm. yeah so yeah, um, suck. we uh changed it up once so we saw the movie it was okay I don't know what did you think Avalon it think didn't it was good? seem good I liked it yeah there was a lot so I didn't remember there was like a couple changes I like, was like, wait, did I read this book or did I not read this book? feels like there was like a lot of heavy changes from what I've seen from the trailer. Like, I don't remember it being as rigidly military as it seems in the trailer. Yeah. I always thought that they lived in like a cult kind of a thing, and now it seems like they live in this utopian society. That's really what it was like. Yeah, um, I never got that vibe from the book either. It was more of, yeah, like, like, like a cult. Everything was still regular. Yeah. And, and this was like in the far future, too. Yeah, that seemed and weird. And there was like, there's like, like drones. There was kind of no stuff. ever a time in the book that I remember it being like actiony. Yeah. It seemed to me. It seemed like they said like, "Look, The Hunger Games was cool. You want to do that again?" Yeah. Like, all, <laughs> all those movies kind of have the same. Like this movie, The Giver, and then there's another movie that's coming out or the Taker. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, wait, is that what it's called? No, it's not The Taker. It's called like The Maze or something. Oh, oh yeah, the, the Maze, Maze Runner. Runner. The Maze Runner. That, yeah. Like, all those fucking things seem the same to me. Like, The Giver, The Maze Runner, like, The Hunger Games, like... Young adult novels? Yeah, exactly. Like, what was that other one? Divergent? Like, Divergent, where, yeah. where it's, like, not, like, anybody yeah, super... Not too far future. It's, like, and it's Everything not, and it's not, really like, is. it's always starring, like, kind of a new actor. Where socialism prevails. It's, like, a new actor, and it's, like, it's just kind of, like, like cheesy, Shane like... Woodley or whatever in Divergent, that's, like, her thing. Even though she's been in a ton of stuff that's really, really good. Really? Yeah, Jennifer Lawrence was the same way, because Winter's Bone... Wasn't she, she was... in Fault in Our Stars, or my... Yeah, she's in Fault in Our Stars. So she's done a lot, but, really? like, everyone's gonna be, like, yeah. Divergent uh, with her. Or, like, now, because she's gonna be in the new Spider-Man, because she's Mary Jane. She um, is? Yeah, she filmed she stuff. She does not look like a Mary Jane. She looks like it when she's got her hair done. Um, yeah. She, uh... She she was gonna be in this one. Um, I just wish they would and she use... filmed a ton of scenes for it, and then they cut them all because they were like, no, you know what? We want to focus on Gwen, which I was like, respect. Oh, that makes sense. That's cool. Um, I wish they just used like uh, a real redhead. No, like <laughs> Emma Stone again, but just made her hair red. And he's just like, Peter, you have a type. <laughs> I like I like Emma Stone. I, I like love Emma Stone. Dude, and I think she's good. awesome. And I was, I mean, she was the best Gwen Stacy. I think she was awesome. With Gwen um, Stacy, yeah. um, but. Yeah, I don't know. That's kind of how this Giver movie was. It was like, you know, but but, I mean, I know you said you didn't want to talk about it, but what was kind of cool was like, I, I mean, I hate to say that it's cool because like, but it was just really. Robin Williams in it? No, 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 no. But it was really real, and it was just so like, it was like real. It was real. That's the only way I can explain it. It was just like real, like real emotion, like. Uh, Jeff Wait. Bridges is like friends with like good friends with Robin uh-huh. Williams. Oh, and, and they brought it up on that. They didn't bring it up, but like when Jeff when Jeff Bridges like yeah he brought it up. When Jeff Bridges like went up to give him an interview, he got all, like choked up and it was just like he was like it's such a bummer that like because I think it was the same day. Yeah, it was like Monday. It was yeah. So he was like I just found out like on the way here or something that like he's like I, j- I lost my friend and I was like and it was like and he got all like choked up and like started to, like yeah. kind of like cry and it was like I was like damn like. Yeah, you know, it, it made it seem like, like much more like real. That sounds kind of fucked up, but like no. Robin Williams was so distant from me. Like Robin, Robin Williams lived like twenty minutes away from here. It's not about where Robin he lives. Like I, just <laughs> because he lives twenty minutes away doesn't mean I see him every day. It doesn't mean I know like his life. Like I don't know Robin Williams. It felt really real to me because like uh... you've never met him. You've never had any like encounter with him other than seeing him in a movie. Like like a yeah, million but, movies though. But like that's the never thing. Never see him in another movie. Yeah, that's I know, the thing. Is but... Robin Williams is such a staple for me. Of like, yeah, I get that. I, I get he's like a staple, and he's like I I get it. Like I know what he is, but like just the fact that he's a movie star, somebody who I've never met before. Somebody yeah, who, he's, you can see that curtain of like. Yeah, he's he's just like so much. He's so far away from me. Mm-hmm. Like 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 maybe not like geographically Basically, but yeah. like but like in every other aspect of life he's far away from me like he's he's distant and like in in it so like hearing that he died it's sad that somebody died but it 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 didn't really like it didn't really like like strike a chord or like affect me like it wasn't okay. it wasn't like it wasn't like oh, my dad obviously it's not well, like I can appreciate that because I feel like 
I don't want to meet everyone else because I'm in the same boat as them, but I read a lot of it and was like, okay, yeah, like, everyone is sad. Yeah, yeah, and that's what it was. But, but then, then I was at the same time, I was like, but I'm really sad. Yeah. And, I just, like, and that that is how it is. It's like, it's like, yeah, thing. shit, it is sad. Like, Robin Williams was, like, a good actor, and he was, like, he's funny as hell, and he's, like, he's a genius when it comes to, like, like voices. Like, yeah. he's, he's good at that shit, and, like, yeah, he's fucking talented as hell, and it sucks that he's never going to be able to make or be in anything ever again. Like, that's sad as hell. But... Just the fact that he's Robin Williams and I'm me, Jason, just like a kid who lived in like Livermore, and, like he's far away from me, like in in a lot of ways. Um, but seeing like Jeff Bridges, like even though Jeff Bridges is also far away from me, just knowing that like Robin Williams isn't far away from everybody. Yeah, you know what like, I mean, like he's a and, person. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, dude, like and and Jeff Bridges is a person too, and he lost like his good friend, and like yeah. to see him like like just really get like choked up and really sad like That's rough, and 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 yeah and i mean it was just it was like it was it was like it, i mean I, I hate saying it was cool to see jeff bridges sad but like no that's cool but it was like a it just was like a real thing humanize like, the dude yeah it was just so exactly it was so human and it was just like wow like probably made the movie better no not really not, i don't know not so it was that bad I mean, the movie wasn't <laughs> the movie wasn't that bad, but just I mean, just it just made Jeff Bridges like more of a person to me, and it was like not as far away, I guess. Like just re- like I guess it's because Robin Williams wasn't in that movie; it wasn't have any effect on it. I bet you, if he was, not to be mean to Robin Williams or downplay the giver, but I bet you, if he had been, that movie would be doing great. Like he would just blow out of the box oh, office, oh, and everyone yeah. would lose their mind. Yeah, be Heath Ledger all over again, once again. Not trying to be disrespectful, but that's why that movie is so popular. Why would see that? Because why? Heath Ledger died. The Dark Knight. So is so everyone popular. loses their mind. Why would the Dark Knight? Dark Knight quote right there. Yeah. Or why that uh, movie is fine. Or why the imaginary of Doctor Parnassus is so popular? Did that come out? Yeah, I never saw it. I wanted to. I thought that they just shelved it. <laughs> I never no, like they researched finished it. it. They finished it, but but I think they were filming it when Heath Ledger died, so they changed yeah. it so that like <clears throat> so that like Heath Ledger's the character that Heath Ledger was playing changes. In between, like three or four other people, like yeah. Johnny Depp, and then I remember them that, saying that. What's that guy's name? Um, Colin Farrell. Ooh, Colin Farrell's cool. Yeah, I like Colin Farrell too. He's sick. Yeah, he's um, got talk about underrated actor. People yeah. fucking hate him. Yeah, because he was kind of like a Robert Downey Jr. kind of. He's kind of yeah, like he's Robert Downey Jr. Who hasn't found that role that like makes him likable yet he's still that like gruff ass beat the shit no but he did I think he did find that role in that Disney Mr. Banks yeah 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 no cause in that he he was like a drunk and stuff but like but it was human and yeah. he was like dude he loves his daughter yeah yeah, yeah. And, and then like and that's and that's, a, that's after Fuck, he like cleaned so, himself up like he so like sad. he cleaned himself up and then he played he played like a drunk but he cleaned yeah. himself up in real life and he like stopped drinking and stuff and like got his act together and like yeah Colin Farrell like please yeah. please like Maybe don't make another Total Recall again. Like, please. Just... Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, no, okay, but yeah, like, really, though, like, I don't, like, I love The Dark Knight, and I think it's a great movie, but I don't think it's that. Um, like, it's just not. And it's it's because he died. It's because he died, so everyone lost their mind over it. Which is fine, and it sounds really mean to say, but that's the truth. Dude, I thought The Dark Knight was great. It is great. It's a great movie. I think it would. But, like, I appreciate it also as, like, a massive Batman fan. Yeah. Like... Uh, but everyone else who's like, oh my god, the best movie, Heath Ledger, best. And I'm like, yeah? If he was dude. alive, would you say that, though? I, I it's think It's like so, In Excess. Dude. Is that album that good, or did the singer just die? Dude, no, is I Nirvana think... that good, or is Kurt Cobain just dead? No, no, dude. No. Well, yeah. That's what it... Nirvana is really good. Nirvana <laughs> isn't overrated. <laughs> Shit. Dude, but... Do you have a line prepared for the show where they hang out with some poser guy, and they know he's a poser, and he ends up killing himself? And in his video, he says, I'm coming, Chris Cobain, and they're like... <laughs> I don't know that he's like super late. Um, uh, oh man, dude! Yes, the Dark Knight would still be just as good if Heath Ledger was still alive. Like, that, it's dude. the same quality of movie. I don't think it would have gotten the success that it got, though. It I doesn't think, change the dude, quality of the movie. I think so. I think it would have gotten. Really? Yeah, dude. I think the Dark Knight Rises is vastly superior. Dude, Heath Ledger as the Joker is Heath like, Ledger as the Joker is great. I think Tom Hardy as Bane was better. What? Yeah, dude. What the hell? He, I didn't know. He Ledger as the Joker was so good, but Tom Hardy's Bane? Are you serious? Dude, but yes, Tom Hardy's Bane is good, but better than the Joker. Better than Heath Ledger's Joker. Mm, you know better. I think I'm just being cynical about it. Dude, I think you are, because fucking Heath Ledger's Joker is like... Yeah, dude, it's the fuck, it's the craziest thing. Like, 
it, dude, so many sick things. Like I was watching like behind the scenes stuff about it, and like, like Heath Ledger like made the makeup for it. Yeah, like, he did it himself. He made went to the store and like bought the paint. Yeah, and he like he yeah. did it himself. And then like he he was he would like bring sick things to the character. Like oh, like I want to like leave makeup on the Joker's hands. Like he yeah. did it himself and stuff like that. Just like little sick things that like he brought to like the table that mm-hmm. like yeah I probably wasn't thinking about. And it's just like dude, he dude. No, yeah, you know. The best. I would at least put Tom Hardy's Bane on par with me for it because I just thought that that was just yeah, immense. no, it's so good. Yeah, but, uh, no, Tom Hardy's Bane was good. It was cool. it was great. It was good. It was great. He was he was great. I think Tom Hardy would have been a Batman. Yeah, Tom Hardy would have been a bit of no, been no offense to Christian Bale. He's probably he's my favorite Batman, but I think Tom Hardy would have been a really good Batman. Yeah. At least a better Bruce Wayne. I think that's what people like wanted for this new Batman was like Tom Hardy. I think, I think Tom Hardy's probably cool with Bane. Like, <laughs> that's like a badass thing to be. Yeah, that is a pretty I would be cool thing. with that if someone gave me that. Yeah. I want to play the Riddler. It's the only thing I think I can do. <laughs> I bet I can do it. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, thank I don't you. Know. <laughs> I know. I knew it. Riddler's a tough one, man. Jim Carrey did, 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 did the Riddler. You gotta play it opposite, dude. You gotta be like... I imagine the Riddler not being over the top like that and being insane. I imagine him just... Like more calm because he thinks about everything. Yeah, that that would be a pretty cool red. You know, not as like flamboyant. Yeah, it. like he's very calculating. Not as Jim Carrey. <laughs> yeah, it's like, not Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that would be a cool Riddler. That would like that that Riddler would be the Riddler that fits into like Christopher Nolan's Batman. Universe. Yeah, it's, like the calm, like really dark and like really yeah. Kind of, obviously, everything dark and cynical and like really just like. That's probably grungy. why I think it is because that's my favorite version of. Like, Batman is Christopher Nolan's one, at yeah. least movie-wise, so yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, let me just put my version of something in there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so anyways, The Giver, so yeah, seeing Jeff Bridges, like, that was was really cool. Uh, like I said, I, I hate saying that, I just don't know, no, no, I don't know any other way of describing it. That's not a bad it. way to say it, I think um, it's, that's a real thing. Someone died who was, like, really important, maybe, and it wasn't a personal friend of yours, which is, I think, a really mature way to look at it, actually. Um... But seeing someone, it's like seeing someone whose like friend just died that you didn't know. It's yeah, makes it real. Yeah, yeah. Like because exactly. to you, you're just like, oh my gosh, like this person just died. That was like, and and around. And, and yeah, and like like I was saying, like it's not like it's not like oh because I'm connected to Jeff Bridges that ma- that affects me. It's just the yeah. fact that like that seeing somebody like Jeff yeah. Bridges like in that state was like like whoa, like in that real state instead of acting. It. Yeah, yeah, but. Yeah, I don't know. It was cool. So yeah, the giver was okay. But it, I think though it was pretty cool that I just thought that it's cool that we got to see it early. That is cool. Like on like before. I got to see Pokemon the movie two thousand early. Oh yeah. Yep. My dad won two tickets in a contest. Dropped me and my cousin Did you get off the and new we were both six. Yep. Dude, he dropped us off in San Francisco at the premiere and went out <laughs> and hung out and we waited in line and saw it that day by ourselves and it was killer. That is killer. It was awesome. That's sick. um. I want to talk about the night that I had, conversely, where I went into it with low expectations, unlike your what? Hollywood premiere giver expectations, uh, when I went to that show oh, that I went to the next night. Just last uh, on Tuesday? Yeah, just last night. Two, last night? Two nights ago. Three nope, nights ago. It was last night. It was last night. Three nights ago. It was last... Three nights ago from when this was on. Tuesday the 12th. I will forever remember Tuesday the 12th of 2014. 14. It's 2014. Um, because... Or is it? I've, it's 2014, historians who are watching this in the future. Um, things were cool before we polluted before, the world too much. The asteroid and we started doing the, the Hunger Games. Games. came back alive. Before we thunderdomed everyone to death. Yeah. Wait, what's thunderdome? Basically Hunger Games, but just one-on-one. Is that a real thing? No. I mean, like, obviously... from a movie. Like, yeah. That's like, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I know it's not a real thing, but... Is that a real thing? thing? Somewhere. Like, we, <laughs> in somebody's made-up universe. Yeah. You know? um, what what anyway. movie is that from? Thunderdome. Oh, my God. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like they said... I feel like I've seen the movie, and I remember them saying, yeah. like, The Thunderdome, or something like yeah, that. everyone Didn't says it? it ever. Oh. Uh, okay. They say it on 30 Rock one time where Tracy Morgan, the stock market plummets and he just happens to be on TV at the same time giving an interview, so he starts giving everyone advice about it. <laughs> and he's like, um, take all of your uh, money out of the banks and uh, put it in your mattress and also start working out rig- rigorously. Thunderdome is the new law. 
And like he just starts <laughs> saying it. It's really funny. Um, anyway, so Tuesday. Um, last week, I was at like a thing for my job where it was like a new hire training. Mm-hmm. Um, and I made like a friend there because he had a Queens of the Stone Age shirt on. Mm-hmm. Um, he looked just like you. <laughs> But older, like literally, like I was like, holy shit, that guy's Jason in five years. That's funny, they had Queen of Stone Queen of the Stone Age. Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah. Shirt sure, on. Because I was just listening to Dude, can I talk? Can I say a word? You said too much already. Can my tongue work for five seconds? I was just listening to them today. Yeah, they, they're they awesome. So I was like, hey man, yeah, that's a really so- cool shirt. And we started talking about it. His name is Parker. Uh, he even has this exact same glasses. Um, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. I have a type. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh is he showered I don't know I don't think so oh we are the same I have a type <laughs> <laughs> um so <laughs> we I noticed it and I was like oh sick and the next day he had a Mars Volta shirt on and I was like holy shit I've never had like a friend who liked the Mars Volta before <laughs> I, like, I've never had someone that actually liked them so I was like dude the Mars Volta shirt and he was like oh yeah and I saw them with Soundgarden and I was like oh shit like and then we started talking about that and from across the room like through everyone else's conversation this other girl goes are you guys talking about the Mars Volta and we were like yeah and she immediately came and sat down and she was like so you've heard their new band right Antimask and I was like yeah because I had um, and she was like are you going to the show on Tuesday and I was like what and we both were like what no and she was like yeah they just announced like a bunch of really small shows on the west coast like yesterday like, there's only a couple of tickets for it. And we were like, oh, shit. So we bought them right then on our phones. Um, we were like, all right, sick. Like, we're all three going to be there. This is going to be hella cool. Um, and the tickets were only, like, 20 bucks, And it was at Great American Music Hall, which I guess is Slims um, or whatever mm. in San Francisco. Mm. And um, I like Antimask a lot, obviously, because I'm a very big At The Drive-In fan. <laughs> um, at The Drive-In fan. And uh, the Mars Volta also. Oh, they're fucking so good. Um, no one likes them except me. <laughs> and like everyone in the Middle East, I guess, where they toured extensively. But uh, they, so I got the ticket and like Antimask is really new and I've only heard three songs by them at the time. So I was like, this is going to be cool. Like, I hope, like, yeah. I hope that the rest of their stuff is good. Like, yeah. I'm not going to know it. And I thought it was just them playing the show. So I was like, holy shit, this is going to be like weird. I'm not going to know what to do. I've never seen these guys live before ever. So, like, what am, I'm going by, by myself. Yeah. Um, well, you're going with those people. Yeah. Well, yeah. I had the intention of meeting up right. with them. And then I got there and was like, yeah. Like, I texted Parker in the morning and was like, I'm not going to, like, hunt him down right now. I think I just want to take this in. And I ended up meeting up with him after and it was fucking awesome. And mm-hmm. I kind of wish that I had hung out with him because we were right next to each other. I just didn't know. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, so, essentially, you saw the show by yourself. Yeah. I saw the show by myself and was able to take it all in, which is what I needed for sure. Um, for it but um, I got home and was like I gotta check out like where the show is and everything and figure it out and I saw that Le Butcherette was playing it also who I fucking love so it was so prime and I was just like holy shit I paid 20 bucks for this ticket I'm seeing two fucking phenomenal bands in one <laughs> night I think um, this is gonna be great and then like the day of the show came and I was like oh, I don't really wanna go like uh, I was just kinda like oh, man maybe I'll just like mood. yeah I was like I don't I have work from 9 to 5 and then like gotta leave right from there and like drive there by myself and like yeah. I was just kinda like I just don't really want to do this. Like, and then I was like, just uh, not into it. Yeah. And like, I had some problems with my printer, like printing the ticket out. And I was kind of like, fuck, if it doesn't print it, I'm just not gonna go. Like, <laughs> whatever. And I'll just, uh, that's a I'll catch him next time. Whatever. And then like, it worked out. So I was like, I paid for this. I have to go. <laughs> and like, I showed up. I left. I ended up going home and like thinking like maybe I just won't go. Whatever. And mm-hmm. then I was finally just like no what the fuck I have to go so I got to San Francisco like 10 minutes before La Butcherette started and like just like walked up the street and like went in um, and was just like alright this club is sick it was like this is a garage um, it was very small but it had like balcony so it was nice but like the area from here to the stage from like the entrance was like that that's a gross over underestimation it was probably bigger than that right but for you can't see it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, they know this garage can be. This garage goes on for like... This garage has a plane in it. Yep. Massive that's plane. Well, that's true. Um, but uh, wow. it's a hangar. Um, I had no idea. I never realized that this there was a plane in here. Okay, well, there's not everyone. Sorry that you ruined it. <laughs> wow, it's but, like a uh, big plane. There is a pool. Indoor pool. Indoor pool and jacuzzi combination. That's a lie. There's no jacuzzi. 
Just kidding, there's not even a pool. It's just a pile of trash that <laughs> we put the camera on. Um, <laughs> that's it. Um, but we, okay, so I like fucking got up the nerve to go. Like I was like intimidated by it or something. Yeah. And I guess I kind of was. That's, that's um, like, that's like, that's I've been to shows by myself though. That's the really? thing. Like I've gone to concerts by myself before. That's something that happens to me a lot though. Like a lot. Going places by yourself? Yeah, and just, or just, uh, yeah, I guess, I don't know if it's by myself. To be honest with you, I myself. like being by myself a lot. I do too. I really, really like it. Yeah, that is something that I'm like pretty proud of is my ability to be on my own. Yeah, like I not, that's not a dig at anyone that I like or am friends with. Like I just, I very much enjoy just being by myself. Yeah. I get to just like think about everything that's wrong with me and like I don't <laughs> have to talk to someone about it. Um, <laughs> and I'm just really comfortable usually by myself. And like usually I'm just listening to sick music like yeah. and oh, yeah. thinking about cool stuff. Just um, doing exactly what you want to do. Yeah, like I don't have to ask anyone like, oh, do you want to stop at Jack in the Box on the way home? Yeah. Uh, I kind of am hungry. <laughs> um, like I, well, I did that in my like, head. I was like, do I want it? You're just like, yeah, fuck I do. I'm stuck in the Jack in um, So anyway, I walk in and I was like, this venue's sick. Um, I'm here by myself. Like this is going to be hella cool. And I like did it. Like I looked around for Parker and was like, I don't see him. I'm going to watch the show by myself. Yeah. Um, and so La Butcherette's walked on and I was like, here we go. Like, I hope it's good. And they fucking blew my brains out. Mm. They were so fucked up good. And it was so sick to see such a small band be that good. Like, I can't even express just how good they were. They were everything that I would ever want a band like that to be. And I wish every band played with the same, like, passion and enthusiasm that they did. Yeah. Um, because it was very obvious that bands I've seen before do not care half as much as these people do. About um, what? About what they're doing. Oh, okay. Like, they're just... Or maybe they just don't have the capacity to be that much of a musician where it was, like, seamless. Like, yeah. it was just, like, this is exactly what they need to do forever. Oh. Like, and everything about it was just good. Um, it kind of sucked because they got up there and as soon as she strummed her guitar, I was like, oh, an orange amp would make the sound that I want. Um, <laughs> damn it. That's really expensive. Um, an orange but, head, you mean? Yeah, an orange head. I have the orange cap, which also they played through, and it sounded immense, and it was great. Um, it was a nice little, like, ooh, I have that. Um, <laughs> but uh, they got up there, and they fucking ripped the shit out of it, and it was so good. There was, like, no fucking talking. It was just, like, straight up in my face the whole time. Um, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was, like, it was just good. Yeah. And then after they ended, I was like, all right awesome like i've seen la butcherettes that's great i'll go see them anytime they come back now mm -hmm. um and i like them a lot more but i was like antimask is next and i still don't really know about them like yeah i hope only it's a good. few songs yeah i know anything. three songs like i know they're extensively their old catalog i listen to all of it all the time yeah hear everyone complain about it <laughs> um it's like really good um so i was hoping that it would carry over <laughs> so I, like, watched the whole, like, teardown of the Butcherette's stuff and was, like, okay. Like, in the entire time, I was, like, really, really anxious, mm -hmm. um, but also really excited to be there by myself again. Like, I was just, like, wow, this is, like, for me. Yeah. This is just a that me is cool. Thing. Yeah. Um, and then they got up there and hit literally the first note, and it was a song that I knew, and I was, like, holy shit. This is the best show I had ever seen in my life. After the first song, I was like, this is the best concert I've ever been to in my entire life. Dang. Um, there was, like I said, there was so few people there, even in the bands. Um, and La Butcherette's literally like walked out and just like sat down and was like watching them, um, which was sick too because you never see that. That's outside from like local shows where bands like watch the other bands and yeah. like, yeah, like this is sick. Yeah, yeah. Um, and even then it's like, they don't even really do that. Yeah, like local they, bands aren't gonna. Yeah, they, they're like they, talking to everyone. They're like, "Yeah, I'm here to support the other bands," and it's and like, well, and "But you're not." Yeah, like, they're not. They're there. To they, they literally planted it and were just. They watched the whole thing. That's um, sick. That's like and, a respect thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, the singer for La Butcherettes is in another band with the guitar player from Antimask. Oh. And she sings for them. Oh. So I think they're really good friends. They're all just like. But even then, that would be a better reason for them to not watch them. Because, yeah. like, she's seen it, yeah, obviously. Exactly, like, yeah. this is to the, like, they're fucking yeah. casual friends. Yeah, yeah. But they still so watch it. It is respect. So, that. yeah. And, I mean, and the band is sick. You need to have respect for this band. Yeah, okay. Like, these musicians are so accomplished at this point. Um, <clears throat> I mean, they've been in the same band, like, a band together since, like, 1993. Mm -hmm. um, and each one has been, like, successful relatively. Yeah. At the drive in, probably the most. Yeah. Um, which is weird because, you know, what were they? What was the other one? What were the Mars Volta? Wasn't wasn't 
this might have been something else. Did, did it have something? Did somebody, one of these bands, one of these people in one of these bands have anything to do with, like, the Code Orange or something? No. Oh. No, you think Converge and Kurt Ballou and Every Time I Die. Um, yeah? Like Code Orange, the band Code Orange? I guess. I think. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Or... I doubt it. Oh. Okay, whatever, maybe. Whatever, whatever, not. I don't think. I feel like it would have been not. Yeah. Maybe. I could be wrong. I don't know. It doesn't think... seem like their style, though. I don't know anything um, about e- any of these bands. That's I, fine. That's just something that I thought that I heard you say. And then I was going to say that because I listened to a Code Orange mm-hmm. song today, and it was weird. Yeah, they're weird. I mean, I, I dig it. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but they're weird. Yeah, I didn't really like it that much. It's a lot of... It's heavy. It's it's it, heavy I, and yeah. unrepentingly heavy. <laughs> um, so... It, it, yeah, anyways, go ahead. Can't unrepentingly say. heavy music is not my favorite thing. Like, I like... I don't know. I like what I like. Yeah. And that's not one of them. Code okay. Orange, I think, is fine. Um, they're not my favorite thing in the world. Code Orange, if, if you ever see this... Sorry. Like, <laughs> you guys are sick. Just not for me. Yeah, that's... Whatever. It's... Cool. Keep, keep, sure, you probably know that. Keep, yeah, yeah, whatever. You probably know your music is not for everyone. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, Antimass, they get up there, and they just fucking rip through their set, and it was so sick. Every single song was so good, and I felt like I knew them, um, even though I didn't, because all of them were so good. And I was just like, literally, like, it was impossible to not like just be so into it, um, because everything was so seamless, and again, like, just the amount of artistic expression that went into that show with so little was so crazy. Yeah. Like, seeing something like that, like I said, like, Under Earth in Chicago was amazing, and it was so sick. Yeah. And this is by, definitely was a better experience. Um, and seeing that was just, like, leaps and bounds above it. Damn. And it, it kind of bummed me out for that show, because I was like, wow, like, that was such a big deal for me to go there and see that, and then I went and saw this and was like, holy shit, this is way better. Yeah, wow. Like, but at the same time, I was like, wow, this is so great, because it's, over. like, I get to see... It's, uh, like, a real thing. Like, not... That's a weird way to put it, but it's, like... It's just, like, real rock music, I guess. And, like, not to be mean to Under Earth, and I love them and everything, but, like, you know, like, they're a hardcore band, and kind of. There's, like, so much you can do with that. Mm -hmm. Um, And this, like, I felt like there's literally an infinite amount of possibility for whatever music. Like, they could put whatever they want in that, and it would sound fine. Yeah. Like, it would be normal. And it was just... Everything about it was so sick, and they, like I said, they just blew through it. Everyone in the place, like, obviously loved it. Yeah, that's um, sick. And just watching them just jam together and, like, just be so into it, I was just like, holy shit, how could someone not want to do this with whatever they're doing in their life? Yeah. Like, how could someone not want to watch something like this and then say, like, wow, I wish that I felt that way about anything that I do? Yeah. Like, I could have the fucking best job in the world, and I don't think I would ever be as passionate about something as they are. Maybe about this show, talking about it. Um, but watching them just like, yeah, blow through that, especially because they've been in so many bands that I love, and this was the first time I got to see them, and I was like, wow, mm. goddamn. That's sick. Um, and to be like two feet away from Omar Rodriguez Lopez while he's ripping through something was just like, <laughs> I couldn't even like fathom the fact that I was there. It was like the best experience I've had in my life. Wow. Musically. Musically. For sure. The best experience I've had in my life. And I just left the show, and I was like, God damn, that was awesome. <laughs> um, and then today, I just spent all day listening to that CD, just like on repeat and going like, God yeah. damn, it's so good. <laughs> and I was so pumped about it, but I went into it like I didn't want to go. Mm-hmm. And it's as so much fun. as I love those bands and like I have like vinyl records from those bands mm-hmm. and like all that stuff, and I still like didn't really want to go. Um, it's calling you. Yeah, it's and then destiny. I, I was like, fuck. Oh, you like, needed to be there. I did. I definitely did. Um, That's pretty cool. That's cool that it all worked out. It did. And like I was like, like we talked about in one of the podcasts, like the music thing. I was like, shit, like I need to. Why would I not? And those guys, Omar Rodriguez Lopez is a filmmaker also, and he directs films and he acts in them. Really? He's in like a million bands. Yeah. Um, and he produces music and records a bunch of bands. Um, yeah. The only downside, I thought Flea was going to be playing bass for him because he did play it on a bunch of tracks for them. He wasn't there. That was a bummer. But the bass player that they had that I guess was his brother was fucking awesome too. So sick. Um, Playing the fleas parts. Yeah, shit. Yeah, shit. You gotta be really good. <laughs> like, you have to be so good. Um, but that was that. And I came home with like this newfound appreciation for everything that I do because I was like, shit, I just want to be... I want to be as passionate about anything that I do as them. Yeah, that's, um, pretty, that's pretty cool, man. And I feel like I haven't felt that until like... Well, until now when I'm going to be cognizant of the fact that I want that. Yeah. Um, 
damn, dude. It was like, it just blew my mind. Everything about it was just good. Awesome. Yeah, everything about it was awesome. <laughs> um, I got a sick button and a sick sticker. I like it good. That's awesome. Paying for parking sucked. That was a, you know what? That sucked. <laughs> I had to pay 20 bucks. Worst part of the night. Yeah, was paying that fucking parking thing. Damn, 20 bucks for parking? Yeah. I, I got to park right across the street, though. That uh, was awesome. Yeah, that is cool. Um, and it was right off Van Ness. I thought about even going late to the show and being like, I'll catch half of the butcher. I said I'm going to go to Guitar Center. And I didn't. Um, and I'm really happy that I didn't. Yeah. They also played, they Dang. played for like an hour, too. Everything just fell right into place. Yeah, everything kept working out for me. And cool. I got gas before <laughs> on my way there. And then, uh... I got to San Francisco and it was still on full and I was like, I have the best car in the world. Um, and I got home and it like had used a little bit of it and I was like, I have the best car in the world. <laughs> like my car literally, ooh, my window broke on the weekend though. Um, your window? Like your windshield? No. Um, one of my back windows um, wouldn't roll up. Oh. Um, it was like half rolled down so I kept it that way for the weekend and then my dad, thank you dad, <laughs> um, on Monday on his birthday fucking like helped me muscle it back up. Oh, um, nice. Which was sick. Um, yeah, dude. That's that cool. show, I, uh, I'm i going to be talking about that forever. Like, I want to remember that forever. Um, I don't know what it was about it that just made it so cool, but uh, newfound appreciation for every single thing <laughs> in my life. Wow. Um, that's sick. I'm glad you liked it. I liked it a lot. I'm glad you had a great time. Sorry about the giver. <laughs> I'm really sorry that I followed up. Man, I didn't get to see Jeff Bridges in person, but I saw one of my heroes in person. It was awesome. <laughs> it was the best night of my life. Yeah, I'm glad you had yeah, so And I got to live it by myself. Fun. I only paid $20 for mine. I got to have a killer night. Um, that's Avalos. It's mine now. Uh, no, Woman no, hater. that is, that's sick though. <laughs> that's cool that it was like that awesome that it like, everything yeah, was man. just that cool about it. And right? I don't know if it like could have been that awesome for someone else. Like, I feel like it was very, it was very tailored to me that yeah. night. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it would have been that awesome for me. No. Well, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, even for someone else who liked them, like, yeah, like, I don't it, think like, it could have been as what, awesome. What was your friend that Parker was? His Parker. Parker. Oh, uh, Parker fucking loved it. Oh, was he it? was on like Cloud Nine too. Oh, really? But he like I was up in it too, like right there, and I moved around a lot to like just check it out too. Mm -hmm. But Parker was, I guess, pushed up against the stage the entire show, oh, like nice. right in the middle. Yeah, that's um, sick. So he was like, he was in it. Yeah. Um, not a good example. I guess maybe other people. I don't know. I don't think other people had like a weirdo religious experience like I had. Um. Which is cool. Whatever. I'm sure an accountant gets that over something. Accountant numbers. Yeah. That. Yeah. Maybe. So everyone has their thing, and I had mine. Yeah. And it was cool. That's I hope that cool. wasn't my peak. You know what? You know what? <laughs> I really <laughs> hope that wasn't my peak. No, that sounds like that sounds like it was your peak. It's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> that was my Woodstock. Everyone. You know. You know what? Like <laughs> I saw two bands. They were pretty cool. Um. I. uh... He's gonna go. Uh, never mind. Just like that, with the hand drop. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> or no. he's gonna go. Uh. No, no, no. I've been uh, really, really uh, like into like stop motion animation lately. Okay. Um, uh, and it might have been because we were talking about Fantastic Mr. Fox the other day. The movie rules. I want to borrow it from you really bad. I really. Want I have it. Do I you have a Blu-ray player? Yeah. The Xbox One's a Blu-ray player. Okay, it's upstairs. I'll give it to you. Yeah, I meant to bring, I meant to bring Star Wars back. I had him in my hand. Did you watch him? Yeah. Did no. you see the wolf guy? No. The I, dog Jedi? I didn't watch all of them. Fuck. I didn't watch Keep all of them. Keep them until you watch all of them. I don't need them back. Okay. 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 I just will. on your time. It okay. doesn't matter. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I just. I. I. I just took it out and I just never put it back in. I. I. I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't get all the way through. <laughs> I didn't get all the way through it. Um. Um, it's not that I didn't want. It's not that I didn't. It's not that I didn't want to get through it. It's just nah, I didn't. Life got in the way. Yeah. So, uh, but but I really 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 want to see Fantastic Mr. Fox like really bad. Have you not? No, I've never. Oh, seen Oh shit! It. I I want to watch it so bad, and I've been watching a lot of the behind the scenes stuff on YouTube and Isn't like, it crazy? dude, it's so crazy and it's so cool and it, and I want to do stop motion so bad, but I want it to be Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah. Like, Wait till you see the wolf scene. Um, it's not like. Okay. Don't tell him anything. I'm not going to tell you anything, because it's not a plot detail or anything okay. about it at all. Okay. Um, what about it is... A, what are, okay, go ahead. What are you going to say? 
Do you, what do you want me to tell you about it? No, yeah, go ahead. Well, okay. Whatever you were going to say. Wait so, till you see the wolf scene. Um, the wolf scene is not plot-wise the most important scene in the movie. But it is the most important scene in the movie. I think I've, I think, I think I've seen the wolf scene on YouTube. Um, and the wolf is like up on a hill or something. Yeah, and then he goes and holds his hand up. Yeah. Yeah, that's the most important part of the whole movie. Okay, I've seen that. And once you see, isn't it great? How it's I, animated? I, yeah, I don't really remember it. It's like the wolf silhouette, right? Yeah, kind of. It's like a yeah, sketch. I, I can't. I can't really remember it. I can't. Um, remember but it. they wanted him to cut it really bad. They were like, "Dude, that's just like a waste of. Why do you need that? It doesn't. It's like that isn't what the movie's about at all." And he was like, "That's what the entire movie is about. Like oh, this scene." And they man. were like, "What?" And he was like, "I'm keeping it. That's sick." Um, and he kept it. That's and it, it is. Guns, yeah. In that, fact, what the whole movie's about. And I remember seeing that scene specifically and going, "Whoa, yeah!" Like when that happened, I was like. Dang. That's my favorite scene in the whole movie, by uh, far. I, I wish... Uh, Ooh! Wait, don't tell me anymore. Don't tell me anymore. I don't want to know anything else about the movie. Close second is a rat knife fight. Okay. <laughs> um, don't... Because I, I wish I could have seen it and figured that out on my own. Like, had, like, had like an epiphany about a movie based on, like, after seeing... It's pretty blatant. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. The people who said that hadn't seen the movie yet. Oh. It wasn't done. Oh, okay. It's, um, yeah. When you, when you get it. Okay. Yeah, I really want to watch it, and I've been watching how they make all of like the like puppets and stuff, and like it, it's so cool, man. It's like, dang it, and just like the vibe and like, I mean, it's a Wes Anderson movie, so the vibe is sick, but like just the fact that it's all stop motion is so cool, and it's, like it's very different. Than it's such like Wes a, Anderson it's movie. so it's such a beautiful thing, dude. Oh it's yeah, crazy. It's for like, sure. oh man, it's it's so like seeing how they uh, like they make the little like puppets out of like like movable parts like mm-hmm. all of these little like skeletons basically yep. and then they like make foam latex skins and then they poke all the fur into it mm-hmm. and, and then they like pe- like pull that over this like maquette type thing as it's like a sock and then it's yeah. basically like like a sock puppet essentially yep. um and it's just like it's so cool and like it's just, like all of these behind the scenes stuff of showing them like, showing like how they make it and just like showing just all the puppets standing there like and it's like I just want I just want one of those puppets so bad like it's so sick. <laughs> no, me too. Sorry, it's it's off topic. What? Never mind. It just oh. made me think of something. It was on it was the thing on Community where uh, this one girl's like a really innocent schoolgirl on it, and she's like flirting with this guy, and he like leaves, and he gives her a bunch of money for the cause they're raising money for. She's like, "What? There's nothing wrong with that." And the other girl's like, "Yeah, but he's got a sock with your name on it at home." And she goes, "If he wants to make a puppet of me, then that's his <laughs> business." <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> Um, but, like, like, in, in, uh, what else that I really, another thing I really liked about, like, the making of was, like, Wes Anderson, like, sat down and he, like, he filmed himself acting out all of the parts yeah. in the movie and then, like, cut it together, just, like, get the pacing right and, like, seeing how, like, things are gonna play out in the stop mode and, like, the animation and stuff and, like, and then, like, and it's sick that George Clooney's in it, too. I, yeah. I heck, I like that's that. That's awesome. I George like that Clooney's so the main. Dude. Jason Schwartzman's in it. Bill yeah. Murray's in it. Owen Wilson's in it. Dude. Like, and, and then also, and then, like, and then when they were recording, like, this, the, like, the, the voices for it, they were, like, acting everything out, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's so sick. It just, and, like, uh, pff, they, like, they dance in that movie. Like the puppets. Yeah, yeah. There's dance parts in that movie, and it's stop motion. I know. It's crazy. When I saw that, I was like, Oh my god. It's insane, dude. Like, it's so insane. And it's so, like... I, I just can't that. wait till you see it. I haven't even seen the movie, and I already know it's good. It's like, it's sick. It's such I, a beautiful thing. Like, just seeing I the little hope parts... I your mind isn't pre-blown. Just si- No. I hope I, you don't go into it and go, oh. I don't think I will be. I, I don't really think it, hope not. It's not. I won't be. I, I can't be. I know I'm not. I always say that. No, I really... I know it. it I know... <laughs> My mind isn't blown right now. I mean, it is blown, but like, it's not like like it's blown. Not, it's not fully blown. It's like it's it's, it's hyped. Yeah, and it's not even about like the story. Like you I don't stretched for the run. I'm not. I'm yeah. I'm not. It's not that my mind is blown over the story or anything or like the ideas in the movie. It, it's just blown on the fact that it's stop motion and just what it's it looks blown like. on the fact that that movie exists. Yeah, I guess. It's yeah, it really is. It's so sick that like in like Wes Anderson's like breadth of work that he has, you know, he's got like a stop motion in there. That's such a cool thing. To yeah, have. especially like, now. I like, have when all there's these other things. options. Yeah, and it's like, dude, it's such a cool, it's such a sick art form. Like, it's such a cool way to 
to tell a story. Not to uh, not to downplay animation, but I feasibly they could have animated it like Shrek or whatever, probably quicker than a stop motion. Yeah. Um, probably cheaper or, too. Yeah, and like the Lego Movie, like like that movie animated. Yeah, I mean it's not stop motion, but they okay. a- they animated it so that it looked like so mm-hmm. it looks like stop motion, but it wasn't stop motion. But they could have done that with Fantastic Mr. Fox, maybe. Yeah. I don't know if I'm glad that they didn't. Yeah. And it's cool like But it could it would have looked the same. And you can see that it's stop well no, because you can see that it's stop motion because their fur will move from being touched. Right, but like and you can see it in there like it'll like Yeah, that's true. Violently shake. Maybe because the Lego Everything's like a plastic. Yeah, plastic. so I didn't think about that. It it probably is easier to do it like that, but you're, I heard the Lego movie just has is, is I heard it's just great. Yeah, I know I, I haven't seen it, but I heard it's great. Me too. either. Um, but yeah, dude, I I, I, I really I really want to watch that. That's movie. awesome. I've dude. been thinking about just buying it. You should. <laughs> it's that good. Yeah, I don't really want to buy it though. Well, you get to borrow it, so you don't need to. Yeah, it's on Blu-ray too. It looks really good. Yeah, you to buy it. It's ten dollars at like Safeway. I was gonna buy it online, like on iTunes. Oh no! Just like have, just just, like be able to watch it. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Oh, that's just a me thing. I like to physically own things. I mean, I like to also, but I don't want to. I don't want to (laughs) physically. I don't want to physically own DVDs and stuff. I don't. Oh really? That's like my jam. Oh, I love it. I don't want to do that because I don't know something about holding something like like a CD or like an album or like a like a DVD and being able to look at it and like flip it over. Yeah. It's like really gratifying to me. Dude, it's just too much though. It's like like I it's so much extra stuff, like extra clutter, extra I mean not that I But I like that. Not that like I like I have my, the clutter situation in my room under control or anything. Yeah. No, <laughs> but like it's just more to add to the mess and then like and then also like every time this <laughs> sounds like so like lazy, but every time I want to watch it I gotta like get out of bed and go put it in and like <laughs> I'd rather just like have I'd rather just have everything like digitally like floating around in the clouds and then just like be able to pick from it. And I I would like to remind you that uh, maybe an hour ago when I told you my superpower choice, yeah. you said that's because you're lazy. Yeah, well I mean, <laughs> well my superpower choice was flight and it's because you're lazy. It's because I'm lazy too. Yeah, I mean I wasn't saying I wasn't like uh, I wasn't. My superpower choice of constant Doritos taste in my mouth. Is not, <laughs> I wasn't pointing out. Lazy. I wasn't pointing out your laziness like. Um, how is that? I never. I didn't understand how that's lazy. What the walking through walls thing? My super power of choice would be to be able to run and walk through walls. Yeah, that's not. That's just not really phase that through them. That's not really that lazy. Like Avalos' super power of choice was lazy. Totally. No, that's just no. cool. That's a lazy. That's no. a lazy. You can go it's wherever. Lazy, it's really, I hate driving. That's a. Oh, I love driving. I hate driving. That's a lazy man's power. I no. Love driving. That's a lazy man's power. Driving is. I realized I that driving. like just the other day before I went to that show like. Being in my car is like, that's my place, man. I hate driving, too. Oh, God. If I can choose to drive anywhere, like, if someone's like, oh, I'll give you a ride, I'll go like, no, I'll drive myself. Uh, I like to. I just zen out in the car. I get to listen to music. Have you ever been in a car accident? Yeah. Like, while you were driving? Yeah. Once. It wasn't bad. I rear-ended someone. Didn't even call my insurance. It was awesome. I've never been in an accident. I just, there's so many times I've always almost been in one, and it's never my fault. So I, don't get me wrong, I like sitting in my car and listening to music and driving, but everybody else just like stresses me out. We got in a really bad accident when I was a kid once. Yeah. Um, we were driving, it was in my stepmom's old Honda, she was driving out of the city, and uh, someone T-boned us and sent us flying up over this lawn, spinning out and everything, it was crazy. Damn. Um, the car was like forked over in half, it was insane. That's Me nuts. and my two older brothers were in the back seat and everything, I was like seven. Yeah. Um... The worst part about it is it was boring as hell sitting in the shop waiting to go home. That sucked. <laughs> I mean, it Dude. wasn't my car, so I like... And at, as a seven-year-old, you don't fathom the amount of damage that has been done. Yeah, you don't really realize, Financially like, to your family. Financially and emotionally. I remember physically. sitting on the fucking sidewalk going, Dad, I am so thirsty. <laughs> and he was like, just drink your spit, Austin. And I was like, Dad, I am... That doesn't work. Yeah, that doesn't and work. And then he like threw me one of those cereal bars that has like the frosted milk and he was like there it's got some milk on it and it, I was like oh, and I like ate it and was like this is fucking <laughs> dumb idea. dad yeah uh, yeah dude I've been in a lot of car accidents and so it's scary driving is a scary thing to you yeah I, you know what I'm sure I'll get in an accident one day and if I survive it I'll probably be a little more wary about driving yeah I've, I'm on that young man's I'm invincible high right now yeah yeah because I rear-ended one person one time listening to the answer Shikari and she was super cool she was like I think I just got your license plate it's alright and I was like I'm so sorry like this is obviously my fault <laughs> you that's what this is what happened in that answer Shikari song what's it called uh you stay less 
No, no, the one where it claps in it. Oh, uh, sorry, you're not a winner. Yeah, that you were. You had to clap along with that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I already her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but you were just unfocused. You I remember unfocused. I hit her, and my little brothers were in the back seat. And I turned around, and I said, "If you fucking say anything to mom, I will kill you." <laughs> and they were like, "Okay, yeah," because I was driving them to school, and I like got out, and she was like, "Hey," and I was like. I'm so sorry. I obviously rear-ended you. It's not your fault at all. Like, I was like, here's my information. Like, can I just have yours? Like, I'm sorry. And she was like, I think I just got your license plate. If anything comes up, I'll call you. Never dude, I've me. been in so many fucked up car situations. I'm so, Dude, I... It stresses me out. It seriously gives me a fucking panic attack almost every time I get in my car. Like, there has been so many times where I've almost just died. Like, so many times where I've just almost been killed. Like, let's save that. <laughs> That's like a... That's, I think that's a topic of its own. I don't want to open that can of worms right okay. now. Okay, I have a lot of stories. Yeah. Just driving to college, back when I went to college. Do you not know? Well, no, not really. I mean, yeah, not that, not to be mean, but I don't know that you ever told me. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, I didn't, but whatever. That's That also is a different can of worms. Um, but when, like, driving, like, to... When I had to drive, like, to DVC mm-hmm. every day, which is, like, kind of far away, which is, like two hours away it was like is it two hours it took us two hours to get there every morning because we were in prime time fucking rush uh, hour traffic okay. it sucked dude yeah um we okay no, oh okay we should probably end it yeah let's end it we could wrap it up okay this one wasn't really about much it wasn't about too much i mean you got to hear us talk about a uh, bad thing a bad thing? A good thing? The best thing that's ever happened to me? Some Besides more bad, getting my cat? Some more bad stuff? Um, a bad thing that worked out awesome for me? Bad Things thing. are good for me. I rear-ended someone and she didn't do anything. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Things yeah. go well for me. Yeah, fuck you. Fuck you. Not to be mean, like, but, I mean, like, <laughs> stuff does work out for me, usually. Not to say that it doesn't come with a share of hardships, you know? Like, I'm not that tall. <laughs> um, I'm not that tall, but my feet are huge. <laughs> um, anyways... Uh, <laughs> Keep it up. This is week seven, right? I think seven. This is a big deal. Seven weeks of doing something. I'm happy with this. That's really more time than I've ever put into anything. Yeah, straight up. I've never followed a project for this long. If you watched all seven, seven of them. Well, well, seen, well six. Besides of them. the one. If you watch them, if you've watched all six of them. If you've watched all of them, you fucking rock. Like this web show. Yeah, if you if you if you have watched all of them, then write in the comments. I've watched all of them. Yeah, please comment saying I've watched all of them, and then tell us what your favorite thing like that you saw was. I want to hear. I want to hear what we did right one time. Yeah, tell and then what... tell me the thing that you fucking hate the most. Yeah, about yeah, this. yeah. Tell us what you like, and then tell us what you fucking hate. Yeah, or just dislike. If you don't fucking hate anything, no. Else, you, there's probably something that you, you fucking f- hate. Like maybe I say like too much, which is something that I'm trying to work. Ooh, on. Ooh, I do say like a lot. I say it like a lot. Me. Go back and count them. It's bad. It's fucking annoying to edit these things and sitting and listening. Listen to how many times I say butt fucking and then like, kind of stall. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, yeah, do that. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you dislike. Maybe it's Jason's beard. If you hate it, he'll shave it. Yeah, no. Maybe I won't. it's mine. Dude, oh. you want it? No, nah, I'll tell that another time too. Um, okay. uh, Maybe yeah. it's our staunch pro gun stance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, yeah. whatever. Just, just let us know. Just fucking let comment us know. on something. Just, I just want to see that someone has just watched write, this. Just write one word. Just say hi or something. Just one word about what you hate. Just like the thing, and then we have to guess who it's about and what it actually. You is. know what? You don't even have to comment if you've made it this far. You've done enough. Yeah. Because for I us. feel like I don't want. I don't want to ask you for anything more than. I want to ask you to keep watching. This. Sitting and listening to us for. Not actually that long. An hour and seven minutes. That is kind of long, but... That's longer than any of the other ones. Um, it's going to get cut out. Maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. Anyways, just... Yeah. Just maybe do Keep what it we, up. Do what we said. I don't really remember what we said. Do something. Or do nothing. I don't care. Do something with your life. It doesn't have to be anything with this. Just do something. Just don't be like me. I don't know. Whatever. Go to a cool show by yourself. It's awesome. Yeah. Unless you're a social person. We'll be back next week with yep. another... Week eight. Born to Life podcast. It's not. We got to get these on iTunes. We got to start doing some real life, straight up podcasts, and some other ideas that we have. Yeah. Start kicking some stuff out, real stuff. Yeah, yeah. A A A A V M M car casts. A A V M M B. Should I be driving in those? Yeah. You're not gonna be comfortable. 
Yeah, I gotta wear a blindfold in the car. <laughs> That's my thing. Where are we going? I just get so stressed out in the car. It's like a, it's like, so I'm like a horse. So you put a blindfold on when you drive? Yeah. The mystery solved is why Jason keeps crashing his car. <laughs> I'm like a horse. Like I gotta have those blinder things on, or else I just get spooked. If you were an animal, you might be a horse. When anything just come, when you were an animal, you when might I, be a horse. When anything comes up on the sides of me, I just get all squirrely and I just. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm not okay. just chilling. I don't pay attention. So I'm just like, <laughs> you just like, dude, has that ever happened? You just like, how did I get here? Yeah, I did that. I just drove to my dad's house up in Sacramento. Two hours later, I was like, oh, that's fucked. It was at like midnight. I was real tired. Okay. Come back next week for another Border Life podcast. See you guys later. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Please, friends. Ooh, nope. I'm not kiss you. No. What if I had? What if I had gone? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. And. Up. And that was good practice. Let's get another. Let's do it for real this time. The kiss? No. The whole thing. <laughs> I was like, oh no. I was being serious. The whole thing? Okay. The whole thing. I think I remember I my parts. Way over here.